Here we go, here we go. So, um, I would like to introduce our third uh, speaker of this evening. Um, I'm, it's my pleasure to introduce Eric Berger uh, with his talk, AI and Art Ain't Misbehaving. All right, take it away. All right, thank you. Here we go. Thank you, thank you. Um, hello, my name is Eric. I'm from Chicago area in the United States and been in Fukuoka for a while. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, and what you just heard is um, it's a track that I made earlier this year, um, but I messed it up on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna adjust this down. Yeah, it's a little. Sure yeah. I feel like it's kind of resonating weird. There you go. Is that better? Better? Oh. No. Good. Lower? Oh. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, this, uh, this machine right here is uh, not at all AI, uh, but it's the closest thing I have to anything like that uh, in that it has a lot of these interesting um, chance functions where if you um, set the percentage, maybe you can, oh, wait, do we still have the camera on there? No, that's okay. Oh, which one do you want? Sorry. Oh, this guy, if you got it. Um, maybe I can lift it up here. I can, I can zoom in. 
Oh. Maybe it's... Get it on the table and... Is it fixed, better? Fixed position. Okay. Put it where you want it and I'll get it. Like that? So basically, um, so we have this pattern here. This is the original with everything I needed. This is the original track I made. And uh, then if we go to one of these instruments and reduce the chance percentage, That's okay. <laughs> it's alright. Basically, we're reducing the uh, percentage of the random chance of each sound coming through uh, in the final mix. So, couldn't really call it decision making or uh, rational thought, but I thought it's tangential enough to the topic that it was worth giving a shot and showing you guys. Um, and there are a few um, hardware synthesizers and instruments coming out these days that do have at least a little bit of machine learning built into them, but my opinion, not worth the money yet. <laughs> It'll take a few more years to really integrate it into something musical, I think. Software is another story. But anyway, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. this is a definition of artificial intelligence from IBM's website, um, and they have kind of a condensed version here. I thought was kind of catchy. Uh, using computers to mimic the problem solving and decision making capabilities of the human mind. It's nice and concise. Maybe a little oversimplified, but uh, works for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, hello. Um, I'm, I'm an artist, I'm not a software engineer or um, any sort of programmer, but um, creating things is a really big part of my life, um, both my personal and nowadays professional life. I work at a kindergarten <laughs> um, and I teach English like many foreigners do. But I'm lucky enough to be able to make stuff like this as part of my job. Um, it's a Adobe Illustrator uh, Aiken test prep illustration for the kids to, to look at and ask and answer questions. Like, why is the snowman falling down the mountain? Why is he wearing skis? What is Santa doing to that elf? <laughs> um, all sorts of funky stuff going on. Uh, one elf in the corner there's really getting into the magic snow. I think you might have a problem. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I do all sorts of different stuff. Um, mostly, uh, if any of you know, already know that I do art, you probably know because of my portraits. Uh, I've been drawing them for about 10, almost 10 years, and drawn over 6,000 people from eight different countries. Um, used to travel a lot. Now I have a wife and a kid, so not so much anymore. But I still, I still work on these. Um, lately I've been doing some online commissions for people, um, which I just do at home, but then send out to wherever people are. It's uh, acrylic and gouache on paper. Um, yeah, stuff like that. I also do music um, on occasion. On, on every once in a blue moon, I perform live. Um, I've directed a couple short films, animated two music video, uh, no, four music videos, and uh, yeah, it's just a very big part of my life. Um, and I, to be honest, I, I debated for a while after Lori asked me if I wanted to speak if. Am I really qualified to talk about AI? Like, I'm not, not that like knowledgeable about this stuff, but I thought AI's connection to art and the arts in general is something that I could definitely uh, give my perspective on. Yeah, anybody know what this is? Yeah. 
big, uh, big problem. Uh, trouble in paradise, as they'd say in uh, Hollywood and writers in general in the States. This actually ended uh, a couple weeks ago, at end of September. I hadn't heard until, yeah, the writers, they won. They got, they got it. Small victories. Yeah, really encouraging. Yeah, <laughs> just a little longer. Um, but yeah, AI has, as much as it's opened up possibilities to new creative avenues, it's also opened up a lot of uh, concerns, to put it lightly. And people around the world are wondering if they're going to lose their jobs to the uh, you know, deep learning that can design websites so you don't need to work here anymore, or the, even artists. Uh, a lot of my artist friends are very anti uh, Mid Journey and Dolly 3 and all that. Um, but yeah, I think to me, this, this, I think this is very important and I think artists need to have representation in not only the legal uh, way things work, but also in the, uh, I'm not sure how to say it, in the, the way the business is carried out also. I think AI can be a really powerful tool, uh, but it can also be misused and abused uh, in a similar way that crowdsourcing was uh, a big problem and continues to be a big problem for graphic designers and web and other things like that. Down with Fiverr. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the big question that I keep hearing in uh, rants on Facebook or uh, I'm actually a part of a Facebook art group where all AI art was banned. You could post your paintings, your necklaces, your handmade clothes, but if you post AI artwork you get a warning and then blocked from the group. Um, so yeah, what does it mean for the artist, for the painter, for the dancer, for the videographer? Uh, VFX artist. AI art can be surprisingly painterly, uh, look very much like an actual person sat there with a paintbrush. It can be stunningly realistic. It can be, and, and otherworldly, it can be surrealistic and very unsettling. I don't want to look at this picture anymore. <laughs> or it can be uh, even nostalgic. It's a, uh, there's that animoy, I think is the word for nostalgia for a time you never lived in. It's what AI must be feeling making stuff like this. Um, or it can just be gorgeous. Um, as an artist, I, I feel, isn't that, isn't that something? It's really like, it's starting to look like a landscape and then it's starting to look like 10 other things. Um, I think it's really spectacular. I don't, I don't feel as intimidated or um, panicked as a lot of my friends do about AI in the arts. I think as long as we do our homework and people make the right choices in the big companies, which I don't know if we can trust them to do that, so I mean, sometimes we've got to strike a little. Um, I think it could open up tremendous possibilities and I don't think it's something we should get divided about. I think it's something we should handle with care. So, um, on that note, uh, on a completely different note, <laughs> this is a, a video. I'm going to see if it works here. I'm only
And he's jumping out the box again. Can we get to the next slide here? It's very, it's very uncanny. Um, this was from about two and a half years ago. Um, and technically it's, it's bots, which I recently learned is not strictly speaking under the umbrella of artificial intelligence. It's considered automation. Um, but um, yeah, it's a, Oh. That I couldn't find. I looked online to see if it was just the, the story was written by the bots or if the animation was, because it feels like. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find the information. I'm not sure. Because um, the title says written by bots. And then in the video itself, it says made completely by bots. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely feels like it could be made by either very strange people or bots <laughs> who think like them. Um, let me see if I can get this thing going. Oh, there we go. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, basically, um, it's a very crude example of, let's see if we can go back. Maybe I shouldn't. Anyway, imagine scary Santa for a second. <laughs> Um, it's a very crude example, um, and obviously AI has progressed much, much further than that uh, at this point, but I think it's, it's very clear to see that um, with something like a bunch of bots watching a bunch of holiday films that, uh, of course, they're not asking correct or incorrect next, but you just feed them a bunch of stuff, they put it all together, spit something out, and it's like, okay, that's a Christmas movie to a computer, all right, <laughs> without any sort of uh, checks or balances or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, um, have you ever heard of Nanuri? Anybody? You know? Hmm? Okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah, Nanuri is a uh, virtual influencer. You know about? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's very, this is to, yeah, also Uncanny Valley, uh, in my opinion. This is slightly less uh, far removed from the human experience. Um, and I thought I'd show a video real quick of this too, if it lets me. Mm, Nanuri, yeah. 400,000 followers on Instagram. She doesn't even exist. Brand deals, Dior and Gucci and what have you. Um, and it's, it's interesting. I, I keep an eye on the time. Yeah. Oh, a minute. Crap. Right along. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along here. Um, yeah, Nanuri, basically, um, to me, there's a music video on YouTube. You can watch it later. It's, it's kind of just average pop music <laughs> with, with an AI voice doing the... Doing the the vocals, but the funny thing is she was kind of advertised as an AI avatar, an AI influencer, but the only part of it this AI is the voice. So all this character design, CGI, animation, all of it is all hand done by people at computers. Um, this guy's the, the mastermind of the, uh, the project and he does the mocap for the video, so when she's going like, doo, 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 just think, it's a middle-aged German man. <laughs> Jorg, Jorg Zuber. I, I'm sure he has, and probably gonna make more. He, uh, he has a master class, like TED Talk kind of thing, at the um, Willem de Kooning Academy in Rotterdam, coming up later this year. So, gets people's attention. It's really, uh, to me, it's a gimmick. Um, it's something that I think as artists we should try to do less of. Um, it's cool because it's AI, like that. I think it should be some AI yeah, should be something that's integrated into uh, your workflow more more so than just like the cherry on top that gets everybody to give you brand deals. But more power to them. Um, is it all right if I go a little bit over? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, this third example I'd like to talk about is um, 
AI as a constructive catalyst. And this to me is uh, representative of what artists should be doing um, or what AI tools should look like for uh, creative media production. Uh, voice swap is what it sounds like. It's a uh, you sing something and it comes out sounding like somebody else. Um, a lot of different similar programs and models out there, but this one in particular um, has Ben Jordan, who is a music YouTuber uh, I follow, I've been following for a while. He's a talented musician, but also very, very knowledgeable about the music industry and legal loopholes that uh, labels will try to screw artists over with and he's been at it for over a decade uh, and he also not a bad software designer in his own right um, and he's been helping the team at voice swap to create um, something that complements music and doesn't take the place of it something that musicians can uh, work into the way they create and is also fair to the artists who are supplying the uh, data sets. So we have a quick video here. Please don't do what the last I one did. This is an example of his voice. Uh, By the way, in my workflow, after setup, all of this can be scripted and accomplished in about two minutes. Let's pan the voices around a little bit and then stick it into a very slight room reverb. And here we go. Amazing. harmonizer guitar pedals that some of us have used. <laughs> now what? And, uh, disable content. Sweet. There we go. Well, now we're back to this one. Enable content. And as promised, we need to address turn. All right. And uh, he also used it on his dog. <laughs> In Lucy's voice into a human voice. You see, Lucy gets really pissed off at Cora when Cora wakes her up from a nap, so I figured this would be the perfect time to put a microphone in her face. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, more or less in, uh, in my mind, the possibilities for AI's positive effect and negative effect on the arts is practically limitless. And it's more a question of how we use it and to be careful to uh, give the proper recognition to the artists whose works are mixed into the data sets, and um, if you're using somebody's intellectual property, you can pay for it, in a, in a nutshell. Um, with that said, I think that AI works best when it's used alongside the human element and not um, trying to replace it or be forced to like do everything, make all of it, um, and I had a little segment I wanted to read here. Um, machine learning and deep learning have progressed far beyond the bots of A Christmas Carol for Carol, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> but no matter how advanced they get, I believe they will, ah, oh, is that what it was? Okay. I believe they will always need a guiding hand to create things that resonate with humans on a meaningful level. It can already make art, but it will require patience, outside input, rewrites, passion supporters, critiques and vision to make good art, just like people. Um, uh, why not use AI to do the exhausting tasks of an artist, like in-betweens of a background character in a 2D animation, or to write the first draft of a chapter that 
you have a little bit of an idea for, but you can't quite get the pacing right. Um, or set off the spark for that new painting series that could take months to catch the eye of the muse to make. So um, when we get nervous about the future of AI, I think it's good to remember that no matter what, there will always be art to be made and new paths to explore. And I mean, come on, who wouldn't want to see Johnny Cash in a clown suit riding a hippo? <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Eric. Okay, we got a question going. Oh, okay, yeah, we don't have much time, so we got maybe one or two questions. Sorry. Make him count. Okay, yeah, sure, hold on. Well, good presentation, even though I was only here for like half of it, but. Uh, uh, no worries, thank you. Just, um, this is about like AI kind of replacing like people's voices and things like mm. that. What are, your, what are your thoughts on how Disney did Darth Vader's voice in the most recent Kenobi series? Uh, it, was that, that AI? Yeah, that was in a, oh, God. the original voice actor. That was all AI. Ha. Huh. Well, I think it's, it's James Earl Jones' uh, voice model. Yep. I think he should get paid for it. Wouldn't that make sense? He's signed his voice. <laughs> he's still alive, he's still but he can't do it. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's uh, he for the de aging. He did. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like a long time ago, or no, recently? Like, ah, oh. well, I mean, if that's what he wants to do, I think it's his his prerogative. Is is it good? Like, how many of you saw The Irishman? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Netflix. Yeah. yeah. I I loved it, but I like really didn't want it to feel so weird. <laughs> um, it's just my own personal uh, feeling about it. It's I think it's better to get as much of a natural. Uh, feeling as you can from what you make, but I mean to each his own. If, if they really want that young James Earl Jones voice, then and if he's okay with it, I think it's fine. I think we got one more question. One more. Where we can go. Uh, Fifty-one seconds. Anybody going once? <laughs> what do you think are the limitations of uh, AI in creating? Uh, art, different forms of art. Ah, uh, in general. Oh, gosh. I don't know if we can know yet. Um, I, <clears throat> I personally believe that it's never going to fully get out of the uncanny valley. It, there's always going to be something that if you look, if you really know what to look for, you can see it. But um, no, I mean, sky's the limit otherwise, I think. I imagine maybe, what would it be like a hundred years from now, maybe these virtual influencers will become like virtual artists who like have their own clientele and their own painting style <laughs> that they've never, you know, had a hand to hold a brush in the first place. Maybe they'll be our competition in, in a real like face-to-face -face kind of way. Could be. It's exciting to think about. Good question. Thanks. I think that uh, yeah All wraps right. it up. Well, thank you very much. Thank Ed. you guys Let's so much. Give another round of applause.